And and we're live, I think. This is, it's 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Daylight, no, not Daylight, Standard Time here in Los Angeles. It's Tuesday, December 14th, 2021 A.D., Stay here for the Hake Report. I was about to say stay tuned for some hour. Um, TheHakeReport.com. Thank you for joining me, guys. I was a little late in setting up my uh, YouTube uh, stream. So, but I'm here, and I am live, and uh, I'm not going away. (laughs) I have some fun stuff, I think, to talk with you about. I have some interesting footage. In my opinion, interesting, if you are watching the video feed of this uh, tornado that tore through the Midwest and the South, you know, some of those states over there over the weekend. Man, Friday night, I think. And uh, a quote from a woman. (laughs) And uh, some messy videos to share with you, messy fight videos, including blacks and whites, maybe. Uh, A backwards world in the white countries. What a mess. There was this hardliner immigration woman, minister of immigration over in Denmark, who was jailed, according to far-left publisher, not platform, publisher, Twitter. Sick. Hake, uh, YouTube trying to hide your show, Hake. No, it's not YouTube. It, is, it was my fault. I was late in setting it up. So I don't think that it's YouTube on this particular case. And I do want to cover the Bill O'Reilly and Donald Trump tour. They're in the middle of it. They did two appearances this past weekend and two more appearances this coming weekend. This past weekend in Florida, this coming weekend in Texas. <laughs> Malkuth X says, hey, I'm going to make a compilation video of all your sound effects intros. Very cool, man. I, I would appreciate that. <laughs> And uh, all this melodrama about January 6th, which was the date of the mostly peaceful Capitol protest. Ridiculous. And your calls. But anyway, guys, let's get right on with the show! Have you been naughty or nice? Oh, oh, oh. guys doing? I am fine. I shouldn't uh, exert myself so much. I go a little um, lightheaded when I when I shout so long and so hard and so loud. What a mess. Um, I have some super chats to get to. Shout out to your girlfriend and others consistently donating and supporting and Lord baby 42. Nice to see you guys. I will be getting to you. But I wanted to very briefly here get to some of this stuff going on. Did you hear? (laughs) Uh, This makes me chuckle. Did you hear that Elon Musk is person of the year 2021? Didn't it used to be man of the year? How far Time Magazine has fallen. Were they ever not fallen? Hey, lost his scruples. Uh, Was Time Magazine ever not subversive and evil and enemies of America. Aren't they an American outlet? But anyway, they put out this guy, and I kind of like this selection. Elon Musk, I mean, I generally have a positive impression of the guy. I know he has some babies out of wedlock. He was born in South Africa. I have never heard him speak out on the plight of this his fellow South Africans, but most of the people who come out of South Africa don't want to talk about it, except for brave Christian men like the great Buffalo Bartlett, who has appeared on my show multiple times. Check him out. I don't know if he's still out and outspoken and 
speaking out. Buffalo Bartlett, I am blanking on his real first name, but he moved to, like, Texas. Legally, by the way. And if you have any immigration, it should be those, at least the upstanding Christian and not white-hating uh, South African natives. The true natives, the true indigenous people <laughs> of South Africa. But Elon Musk is a South African guy. He's talked about how the, the government's kind of inept. And who knows how apt he is. Apt? Apt? Elon Musk is a weirdo. But most highly, highly smart people are. <laughs> so the, the so-called progressives are all mad because he's been selected. What an absolute disgrace. Whatever. But I think that it used to be man of the year. And now they've changed it to person of the year because they're politically correct. Shameful. Ridiculous. Um, I also want to talk about this briefly here. This, uh, before I get to calls and some of the real stories, although this is kind of real. Clip 11. This is from Fox 10 Phoenix. Fox 10 Phoenix gets interesting footage, but this took place nowhere near Phoenix, Arizona. Terrifying, deadly tornado caught on video in Kentucky. And the first footage here that I'm going to show, well, it's going to be one, like a minute and a half long, minute 43 seconds, something like that. Footage of this tornado in the dark, dark, dark. You see most, most of it is going to be just black that you see. And it was recorded in portrait, meaning vertical. Vertical, you like, you know, like if you go to, uh, what is it? Bless you. If you go to uh, World Star Hip Hop, it's all portrait. <laughs> That's an old joke. Uh, and then you see intermittent lightning, and you see this huge, what looks like, huge tornado clouds thing. Crazy. Uh, presumably the power is out. This is in Kentucky. And it was shared by Fox 10 Phoenix, courtesy of Eddie Knight of Sacramento, Kentucky. Sacramento. Isn't that a Spanish word? Isn't that the capital of California? Sacramento, Kentucky, not to be confused with Sacramento, California. Doesn't sacrament mean like holy offering or something like that? Well, I don't know. Maybe this was an act of God. Or maybe it was the climate change stuff because the weather's warmer or something like that. Several people were killed in this tornado, by the way. Several. I mean like 64 or 100 or something like that. Anyway, look at this. Look at this video footage. I'll have the first 34 seconds is the real-time footage. Well, you know, normal time. And then I have it in slow motion, half, half speed, so you can see a little bit more. Because the lightning flashes are so brief that you barely see anything. So, watch this. And wonder. And I have it, like, kind of double video for you guys. Listen to the wind. That is awesome. Wow. Man! Yikes. Is that a car? That is awesome. So the fla- at the flash, the white flash, you'll see it. Okay! Switch. <laughs> That's a southerner, I think. Now it's in slow motion. You hear it slowed down. Low thing. Crazy. You guys ever see the movie Twister? I didn't. Man, though, look at that. Is it really that big? Whew. Get to the basement. Terrifying, says Lord Bibby. 42. Looks fake, says Miko El Chicano. <laughs> You're not saying it is fake. Mid-December, 65 degrees in Virginia. Barely had a winter last year. Are they able to control the weather? Wild, huh? And there's this evil woman, by the way, who's in charge of FEMA under the Biden administration. Exploiting these crises. <laughs> oh man. Sorry to, uh, what's that guy's name again? 
Sorry to- apologies to Eddie Knight. Made you sound like a monster. Cause I had it slow motion, and I didn't preserve the pitch. Some tornadoes can be a mild wide, bruv. Says, uh, Snow Goose. Wow. 250 to 300 mile an hour winds? Man, I think 50 miles an hour is fast. I feel like I'm gonna get pushed over at 50 miles an hour. I'm not, because I'm strong. <laughs> and tough. Spooky voice. <laughs> Maxine Waters flying on a broom near the tornado, yeah. Wizard of Oz, Kansas weather. Yeah, crazy stuff, huh? So, credit to Eddie Knight of Sacramento, Kentucky. Shout out to Fox 10 Phoenix, that was on YouTube, they, sh- they shared it on their YouTube. Uh, Deanne Criswell, evil FEMA director. FEMA is the, you know how you guys, the conspiracy theorists, whom I love, and many of, many of the times you are right, you are correct. Sometimes you may be incorrect, especially if you get into speculation. Don't get into speculation, guys. Don't get into gossip and, and just saying stuff you don't know to be true. Saying stuff that you think seems right. That's grown men doing that. You heard some of those black callers calling in about Trump and Epstein and, uh, Pretending Trump was doing stuff. Shout out to the Odyssey people. <laughs> As Midori says, I laugh at tornadoes. Nice. Texans can handle 20 degree weather. Whoa. Below 50, it's freezing. Uh, honestly, it's kind of cold below 60, honest, in my opinion. I will be reading your super chats, guys. But this evil woman, FEMA camps, you know how they want to put us all in FEMA camps? Like what they're doing in Australia, I think, with regard to the China virus. I read a- I played a clip last week of this beautiful, probably a liberal woman, who did not e- did not even get infected with the virus, and they sent her off to a FEMA camp. Of course, it wasn't FEMA per se, but it was the equivalent. It was like a- it was like a Nazi concentration camp. Or it was like a, a Japanese internment camp. Of course, it was only a couple of weeks. But still, stupid. Deanne Criswell is the FEMA director. And she's, you know, purportedly this, like, white woman. But uh, Washington Compost reports credulously, December tornadoes are part of a new normal caused by climate change, says the FEMA chief. She just wants a well, I'm gonna say that she just wants job security, but it's not just that shallow. It's also, they are true believers in their lo- evil, terrible lies, right? Because they don't know what they're talking about. New York Post has a headline, Don't believe the pseudoscientific hype about tornadoes and climate change. Market Watch reports, which is a far-left outlet, Enemies of America, was the deadly t- Kentucky tornado due to climate change? It's complicated. That means no, no proof. You have, you have no idea what you're talking about. NPR says the exact link between tornadoes and climate change is hard to draw. And yet I, I read to you all those liberal Twitter people yesterday who were like, oh, climate ch-. <laughs> Somebody said sarca- sarcasm is of the devil and they don't like it. But I use the heck out of it. I don't know. Uh, oh, climate change. We need to not help Kentucky because they have Republican senators who don't support the climate change legislation and they also don't support gun control. Dumb! (laughs) Is that true? Skip? Skip claims HEMA, uh, Hillary Clinton, HEMA. Her friend was HUMA, right? HUMA Abedin, I think. Uh, I could be wrong. Hillary Clinton called the FEMA camps, happy camps. (laughs) So dumb, huh? So dumb. And did you know that there's a female, very briefly, I think, hopefully brief. Did you know that there's a female lieutenant governor of Kentucky? What happened to Kentucky? Was Kentucky ever awesome and based? Or were they always, like, the worst? Well, they're not the worst. But I've heard that some of the blacks from Kentucky are very rude. Which is surprising to me. And they elected this woman to be lieutenant, purportedly, to be lieutenant governor. And they they have a Democrat male. Democrat male is another word for beta male, right? I mean, there are Republican betas. 
but Jacqueline or Jacqueline Coleman, who's married to uh, Mr. O'Brien, but she didn't change her name. 39 year old female Democrat is the Kentucky lieutenant governor. She's younger than me. <laughs> she was like a ball basketball coach, teacher, and then her father was like an NBA player, Jack Coleman. And her father and grandfather or somebody were both like politicians. Psh, uh, by the way, she kept her maiden name. She didn't take O'Brien. And she gave birth to one of her children while in office. I think she has like four kids. Good for her. I don't think that she's in... She might be mixed. She looks kind of mixed. Like not 100% white. She looks mixed to me. Although Coleman is, seems like a white last name. But anyway, she, she toured some of the damage and the debris of this, left by this tornado that ravaged, according to CNN, uh, the state of Kentucky. It destroyed it. A lot of it. I saw a level of devastation that was only rivaled by the compassion and love of neighbors, she said. You don't know anything about love or compassion, you evil Democrat. What's a, what's a woman being a Democrat and in office and had a baby while in office? She had a baby. She gave birth while in office. Ridiculous. Evil mama and evil voters who voted for her. Purportedly. <laughs> Do we really know? Do we really know? I have some messy videos to share with you guys. Messy, as in like fights. So if you're watching the video, you're in for the for a treat. If you are listening to the audio podcast, I will I shall do my best to describe what's going on. Some of the video is silent video of the whites fighting. But let me first get to a caller or two. You can call in 888-775. 3773. Nice. Uh, but first, let me get to a call. David, a first time caller in Canada. How are you doing, man? Good. Uh, I'm wondering. So, I'm 18 and. Okay. I nice. want to become a devout Christian, but. You want to become I, a devout Christian? Yeah. In my family, they keep saying that uh, Jesus is a socialist, and <laughs> I'm having trouble with that because. I don't want to worship a socialist. Right. Obviously. Is he a socialist? No. Uh, are your are your family Christians? Uh yeah. They're really? Anglican. They're Anglican, yeah. Anglican. That's the British church, right? Right. Yeah. No, he's not no wonder the the Brits in Canada and America really still have gone down so low in New England. Uh because Jesus was no socialist. If you want to watch a, an hour-long YouTube video on was Jesus a socialist, there was a... Are you familiar with Jesse Lee Peterson? Yeah, yeah. He I, had a, a Sunday service, an archive Sunday service from late 2012, and we released it on a premiere on Bond Rebuilding the Man YouTube channel several weeks back, I want to say several was Jesus a socialist? And, or is Jesus a, a socialist? And the answer is no. Um, socialism is communism, just without the gun on you. And so what we have in America, and in Canada, and elsewhere, is communism. Jesus was not for forcing people to stay with him. He let, at one point he had, he had hundreds, if not more, of disciples, and they all left except 12, the faithful few. And even them, some of them were snakes. Uh, and, and they were weak and betrayed him and, or turned their back on him and stuff. So, no, he didn't force people to give. He didn't force people to share. He didn't force people to follow his rules. He, uh, he, he freely gave and he freely accepted what was given. He was a capitalist. <laughs> uh, I, I chuckle, but I, I'm a little bit serious. It's a, there's a Christian, there's a good way to be a capitalist and there's an evil way to be a capitalist, right? Mm. It's just a tool, I think. Uh, we have commie capitalists now where these huge corporations are pushing evil. Are you, a, are you, a, so you, 
you want to be a devout Christian, but you're wondering about what Jesus was, I would just, yeah. I would just let it rest. Don't try to figure it out, though, man. Wait, yeah, cause wait and see. My entire childhood, I've been, my, my family, they say, Jesus is a communist. <laughs> uh, he gave up everything, and he hates rich people. Not true, like man. That. Jesus loved everybody. He even loved, it's even in the Bible. He looked at, I think, uh, with a rich young ruler, when the rich young ruler went to him, I think he said, the rich young ruler claimed all the commandments he kept since he was a boy, since he was a child, and I think it says Jesus looked at him and loved him. Rich, oh, wow. young, so no, he did not hate the rich, he did not hate anybody. Do you uh, think that uh, King David went to heaven? Oh, look at this! Um, I assume so, but I don't know, but it, I would assume so. And your name is David. Yeah. Nice. Uh, here's Ma Mark 10, verse 21, talking about the rich young ruler. A man, a rich man, right? Yeah. Looking at him, Jesus showed love to him. Boom! So, that was a rich man. And who knows, honestly, the people who are quote-unquote poor in Canada and, and uh, America, they live more comfortable lives probably than this rich guy who was rich back in the day when, you know, life has gotten very comfy. People are so spoiled today. So, I don't know. You know what I mean? The, uh, this poverty is so relative. These people are pampered, and the people who are quote-unquote poor today, they're like rich compared to the people who have faced true poverty. But anyway, he said, one thing you lack, go and sell all you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. But he was deeply dismayed by these words, and he went away grieving, for he w was one who owned much property. He said, how hard it will be for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of God, because it's a temptation to be attached to the things of the world. And the communists are the ones who are attached to the things of the world every bit as much, if not more so, than the capitalists. Because they right. believe in uh, materials causing people to be moral or immoral. And it is a temptation when you are either very, quote-unquote, poor or very, quote-unquote, rich. You have temptations to steal or to be attached or think that you're, you're independent of God. You should just be, not be attached to the things of the world. And there's like a difference between being a, a capitalist so that you can help, like, people, and then being a capitalist just to, you know, have luxurious things, right? Right. Yeah. Um, th my idea of capitalism is I have something of value to bring. That's the capital that I bring. And the capital that I receive is either money or somebody else has something of value that they do in return. Or Bond, looking at Bond, which is Jesse Lee Peterson's nonprofit organization, I see the value in what Bond does, so I donate to Bond freely. What, what you, do what you... There was somebody who said, and I don't know if it's true or not, but they said, do what you love and money will come. Or people give, or people pay for what they see value in. And that's not, that's not the type of free stuff where they take your money by force and redistribute it. Those people are snakes and wolves in sheep's clothing. So, uh, does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, also I see free markets as people that make their own decisions. And right, that's, they, that's they what it's supposed to be. But when they have these huge companies that get subverted and infiltrated and start to push their false morals upon the people, we need to push our true morals upon them and overcome, or push back at least, and stand on what's right. Yeah. Do you know if I can speak to GLP? You can definitely speak with JLP, not on my particular show, but you can call into his show if you're, if you're free earlier in the mornings. He's on from 6 to 9 a.m. Uh, Los Angeles time, which is 9 to noon New York time. I don't know where in Canada, where in the time zones you fall, 
where you live. But you can also call in off-air if you want private counseling or just want to ask a quick question. You can call into the office, the bond office, hmm. which is 800-411-BOND, 1-800-411-2663. That's, uh, you can call that office number really any time, and if we don't pick up, leave a message, and uh, someone will get back with you. And, and, and another uh, question I have is, uh, do you think hell is a fear tactic, or do you think that, uh, um, because I feel like if someone dies and they're a bad person, they might just never see heaven, but they won't burn eternally in hell. Oh, you know what? I would just leave it as an I don't know. I think that it, it is often used unquestionably as a fear tactic by people who don't know what they're talking about, but it's, I think that it is also real, and it's here on earth, too. There's, you know how Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand, it's here? Mm. So is, so I think is hell, is here and now. And it's also in the future. Both. Yeah, I think, I think hell is on earth, I mean. Yeah, look at people, have you ever seen the evil coming from people? Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, like. Or in yourself? I don't know if you've seen evil in yourself yet. Oh, yeah, I mean, I've seen evil in myself, but I try to get over it, you know? I'm nice, a, man. I'm a young man, and I do think that I wish my family was a bit more... I, w- I wish my family was more conservative, and I wish they were more, I guess, Christian, but... Uh, you know what, man? Just wish them well. Don't... You, I encourage you to be grateful for your be grateful in your situation the one of the wiz, wise things that the bible says is be grateful in all circumstances yeah you you want to wish them well and you want to be a good example yourself but you can't change people and you wouldn't want this situation is for you to overcome within yourself not for you to just wish they were different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, they... they. I feel like they live their life in guilt. Yeah. I have six people that are really close to me in life, and I want to see them in heaven, and, like, I want... I want them just to be... have a great life, but... Yeah. It's almost like they've lived a life of a lie, almost, you know? I... I can totally relate to you, man. I used to think a lot about that stuff and wish that my friends and family members would go to heaven and stuff like that. I kind of assumed that my, my family members would uh, mm. because they were quote-unquote Christians. Mm. But um, here's some advice from a, from a chatter. Um, relax. Mm. Relax. You have nothing to worry about. The present moment is real. Don't get in your head and speculation about the future. Uh, just watch yourself. Because you can't change them. You can't save them. You can't even save yourself. Yeah. But the Bible does say, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it's God who works in you to will and to act according to his good will. Something like that. That may be an NIV translation, <laughs> which is politically correct. But... It's to that. It's something to that effect, man. And I say, guys, don't, uh, I say, don't worry about them. Hmm. And are you guys um, evangelical, Baptist, or non-denominational, Methodist? Like, what do you guys find the closest? Uh, to you? non-denominational. JLP was raised uh, Baptist. I was raised not particularly uh, anything in particular, but I was a Christian because I we didn't focus on the things on those uh, denominations, but I did go grow up partially in a Presbyterian church, but not the pro-gay kind. It wasn't pro-gay. And then um, a conservative friends church, which is the Quakers, and a lot of the Quakers are liberals, but these people were not liberals or socialists. And a lot of decent people, but I just wasn't that interested in, I just, I just read the Bible and my parents were pretty good examples. My siblings were pretty good examples. And I uh, did my best. 
do you think that the uh like the homosexual thing or whatever is that a big like to does God see that as like a big problem or like is that just a societal he sees problem? what's that say again is that a societal problem or is that a, a problem like God has like I see it more as a societal problem more than a problem of God like because in society like you can't have everyone who's gay because then you won't have any more babies <laughs> right with with God I think he cares more about other stuff uh I think it's more just a societal problem than it is a, a Christian problem. What do you think? I think it's not God's will that people be into that mess. Right. Yeah. I don't think it is. Some of the Christians turn it into like this this huge deal, and meanwhile they're a mess themselves. Mm. But uh, it is it is not of God to be into that stuff. It's not of God to be accepting that that stuff. It is. Wrong. It's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. What makes you ask that, if you don't mind my asking? Well, you, you brought up the gay thing, so I was wondering. Also, I, was wondering I bring that up be- because people have been, been brainwashed in it. I don't know if you <laughs> as a... Se- I don't know if you ever saw it as something's not right about this. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really seem natural to be right you know, having sex with the same right uh, gender. But uh, what do your like? What do you guys think about sodomy? Is that Gross. Also- it's it's uh that I think is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So, is is vaginal sex with a woman like the only way to go? The, I what? mean, that's the only real sex because that's what's meant to. It's for making babies, you know. It's yeah. it's for uh, be fruitful and multiply. There was one guy in the Bible in the Old Testament, you know, like the brother died, so the brother had to marry the brother's wife because the brother died without leaving any children. So to carry on the brother's legacy, the other brother had to get with the brother's wife. Almost reminds you of the Biden family, but it's Old Testament thing. I guess things were different back then. And he, yeah. because he was selfish or something. He did not, he made it so that, and you guys know this method, but he did it so that he would not have uh, put a baby in her. And God saw that as evil and he killed him. <laughs> so if, you, if God's killing a, a man for having unfruitful fake sex like that, then uh, I think that uh, you don't want to mess around with that stuff. That's <laughs> Louis says, tell us, Virgin James. It's in the Bible. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, it's not for, it's not for selfishness. Uh, the, um, the Bible says something like, in the days of your youth, remember your God. And, yeah, you, you're gonna have, um, stuff you want to do and you can't really con- control yourself, but you want to s- keep an eye on the God who gives you self-control. Yeah, another thing is is that people in Canada especially, they say that uh, this is the abortion issue, but they say that life doesn't start at the beginning, like right after sex. Uh-huh. It starts three months after. Is that, like, how do I respond to that? Because I know that fetus means little one, and I believe that uh, life starts right at the beginning. Yeah, but it is. Me I think... After. I think it is clearly a, a, a life form, and it's not ours to play God once the, that life has started, that life form has started. It may not be recognizable to us, but those people are trying to play God, and it's, they're, not, they're not honestly pro-science. <laughs> it, the, the, I'm bringing that up just to show the hypocrisy, but it's ridiculous. Mm. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean- because it happens all the time here, and there's also people, I mean, there's Christians who say that, but in the Ten Commandments it says, you know, you shall not murder. Right. That's, uh, do you think, do you think that, because I think that abortion doctors should be, have the death penalty, what do you think? Do you think the same? Uh, once it's outlawed, if it's outlawed, 
depending on on what's going on, what they're doing, yeah, there is room for that. And same thing too, honestly, with the any evil mothers, they should be, they should, or, or if let's pretend if there's a father out there who pressures the mother to do it, which, yeah, I think that sometimes happens. But usually I think it's the mother who wants to do it, and the father doesn't necessarily want that to happen. Uh, I could be wrong. But, no, anybody who uh, plays a role in the killing of a child, that's, that's wrong. I don't, know, I don't know about the death penalty, especially right now, because we have a corrupt culture that's accepts, that accepts this stuff. And we have, to, we have to unbrainwash the people. That's step one. And, yes, we do need to bring some uh some punishments and that will help change the thinking in the mind of the people for sure yeah cuz i just, and then there's also people who canada say 6 months into a pregnancy you can get an abortion but <laughs> that is plain out murder i think i mean yeah I no it's ridiculous so yeah i mean those are all my questions and well i appreciate it fun. david nice talking with you yeah. You done with high school already? Yeah, I finished a year early. Nice. And I want to uh, I want to start businesses and invest in real estate. Um but I don't want to take on debt because I think it says in the Bible like the slave or the lender owns like the borrower or something like that, you know. Yeah. You like, uh People say that there is good debt. I don't know if that's true or not. I think that there there may be some truth to it. Like, but you do want to pay it down and pay it off as quickly as you can if you get into any debt. And usually, the most debt you don't want to get into buying a buying a real estate, buying some real estate. As far as debt goes, I think that's honestly maybe the only acceptable debt. I don't think that even getting into debt to go to school is wise at all. Oh, what about business debt? No, I, I'm no. not for that. Unless you have such a huge business that it kind of pays for itself and you're already going. Like, maybe Trump did stuff like that. Mm. But I don't know if it's wise either. Yeah, because... But to begin with, but to start your business? No way! Start small with what you have. Or start with what you have. It doesn't even have to be starting small, but start with what you have and where you are because people get too big for their britches and they're not they're not they don't have the skills or the mindset or the experience to handle that the responsibility so why would you give them all that extra uh power because they right. can't handle it so yeah i would like to uh i'd like to build a business and then that's cool. five years i would like to sell it and then when i sell it, i can put all my money into real estate Nice, man. Are you Asian or something? Or are you white? Are you black? What are I'm you? I'm white. Okay. okay. <laughs> Just curious. Yeah. Well, right on, man. That's I like your attitude. I, I wish you well with that. We'll see what happens. Yeah, nobody else my age is thinking about any of this. They're all just walking around like sheep. Well, Apology. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the age to be doing it. That's the age yeah. to be thinking like sheep, honestly. So don't look down on those guys. Yeah. Yeah. But thanks, David. It's good to hear from you. Call me again if you can. Yeah. All right. Take care. Okay. Merry Christmas. You as well. Thanks. Bye. He was nice. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with me with that call. I kept him on a long time, but I really liked talking with him. He had interesting questions. <laughs> He's about my level. Nice. I'm on par with an 18-year-old. Straight across, man. 18 at heart. That's cool. But I'm 40. Can you believe it? Uh, let me read a few Super Chats, guys. Excuse me. Uh, your girlfriend gave a Super Chat and states, here's a clip, and uh, gave me a, sent me a link. Here's a clip from two years ago where Joe, as in, uh, oh, Axis denied. What? Uh, maybe I need to switch to the hate report. Let me see. Please. <laughs> I'll request access. Request sent. Uh, oh, maybe it was my run. I don't know. But anyway, thank you, your girlfriend. Um, where Joe from Phoenix purportedly says he's a trained lawyer. 
Whether that means he's passed the bar or he just dabbled, make of it what you will. Your girlfriend, the researcher, reminded me of Ann Coulter. Appreciate you, your girlfriend. Get it together, James, says <laughs> Jupiter. Your girlfriend also gave a super chat and said, stated, People often wonder why the left is so pro-establishment these days. I believe they always were. They just didn't have an establishment they agreed with to back when they objected to it. Yeah. They've completely subverted and taken over the establishment. Tomorrow, which is Wednesday, we have our Bond, well, Bond has their Bond Archive Sunday service throwbacks. And it is going to be interesting, I think. JLP will talk about, from back in 2013, we'll talk about the evil people. Why are Christians letting the evil people make laws, make evil laws against them? It was once in this country, JLP will describe, that uh, the Christians ran the country and imposed laws on the evil people, the godless people, um, to contain and control them and hold them back because... He talks about how they don't have the law of their hearts to, to rule them, so they need the law of the land to contain them. Well, now they have the, Christ, the, the Christians have laws against them, and the whites and the men and everybody decent have laws against them. It's shameful. Thank you, your girlfriend. Uh, yeah, the left is pro-establishment. They are for oppression that they pretend to be against. <laughs> Lin Yen Chin. With a super chat, generous super chat, Lord Goodhair, you go lightheaded when you force your already shallow flow of breath to do more work than your poorly oxygenated, oxygenated blood can handle. Starving your brain, kind of like that unemployed, dead, drug addict, Giorgio Mama. Align your spine to fix this. Is this alignment? Or it's a little bit better aligned, perhaps. Thank you, Lin Yen Chin. I appreciate the constructive criticism. And it's kind of hot in here. Can we turn... I don't know. I feel kind of bad asking for AC because it's cold out there. But I've been talking a lot. And a lot of hot air coming in here. Um, yes, please. Turn on the AC. But um, thank you, Lin Yen Chin. Appreciate that. Uh, here's some messy videos for you guys. Um, I saw this shared on Twitter. Okay, uh, I will screenshot that. People requesting to be unbanned. I mean, I keep on forgetting. Ian Miles Cheong. Is that how you pronounce that name? Stillgray.substack.com, he says. Tweeted out, white supremacists intimidate airline staff. And I bleeped it out this time. Sorry for that Sarah Silverman clip. Dirty mouth, not a Christian, uh, female. Hot breath hake. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to, I have no context for this clip. I don't know what's going on. I just know they are at a, what looks like the, the uh, checking line or something like that. At a, an airport. And so here's black, specifically black females, and it's not white supremacists. It's just... This Ian guy, who's supposedly pro-Hitler, Hitler fanatic, uh, according to some transgender crazy person, calling it white supremacists facetiously. It's about a minute long. Enjoy and watch. Whoa. <laughs> Trying to chill them out. Reaching over the desk. Like that. What's up? <laughs> Somebody said nappy yeah, head. Really like that. Yeah, so shut the Is that black on black? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Sorry about. I didn't bleep that part. <laughs> Is that the security guard who's just standing there? What's up? Is that a dude trying to stop her, calm her down? Hang. Stay away from me. 
one male. They're walking down towards uh, stage one. Two females and one male. Okay. Pink Victoria's Secret duffel bag. <laughs> Is that a white woman calling the cops on them? Nice. Right on. We need more. What is that slur? I dare not repeat it. That slur for a white woman who reports on a uh, riffraff in her vicinity. Nice. Keep it up. We need that. It is a daily occurrence at airports now, states covert o overt. Yeah. And in this case, it's not the uh, checkout person. Maybe the checkout person has an attitude. Sometimes they're black. I think I heard the customer call the uh, checkout person ch or checker person or whatever that you call these people. Yeah, Nate Higgers, Karen. We need more of you. And we need, we really need men. And the, the black ladies need men. And I use the term ladies loosely in this case. But there's a man who's a male who is trying to contain her a little bit. But it's a shame. Well, to balance it out, here's a white one for the blacks. <laughs> Except I see what I think to be a Mexican woman here, too. But she kind of jumps in later. It's customers versus workers. Females at the workplace. Right. This is from one, and I don't endorse this Twitter account, although it's mildly entertaining. I don't like it that much, but it's black. So it's entertaining. Joel... Oil sheen. It's a, it's a mocking Joel Osteen. Why do people have to mock Joel Osteen? And he tweeted out in other news from a few days ago, silent video because he or somebody added like rap music to this, but it's white. So I wish there were noise. I have no context for this clip, but there's more women out of control. White women in this case, purportedly white. I don't know. And a seemingly brown woman. Brown is Hispanic. Not black. A lot of blacks call themselves brown. Psh. Uh, fighting. Workers in aprons at a store versus like a customer or something. Watch this. It's totally silent video. I wish that there was noise. I wish. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, two like purportedly blonde ladies. Gen X, maybe millennial. And see that one? Hispanic. Oh, there's a guy trying to break it up. <laughs> uh... Terrible. Do you want to see it again? That was a short. There's a short one. Watch it again. <laughs> Look at this. They're in like a Joanne's fabric store or something like that. I don't know. Blue aprons. Hardwood floor or laminate. Uh, what a mess. Messy people. So shameful. Speaking of the d downgrading of society. One last brief little update. I don't know why I take an interest in this. Spake spends half his day watching World Star. <laughs> no, man. I, I, maybe I should. Uh, the parents of Ethan Crumbly. That's the 15-year-old guy who's charged with imaginary terrorism. I told you about that yesterday. In the deadly Michigan High School, Oxford High School, shooting last month. Oxford strong. Cringe. The suspected murderer's parents are expected to appear at a probable cause hearing later today. James and Jennifer Crumbly, who look like about my age and more, perhaps more messed up than me. I, I would hope that I wouldn't raise a murderer. <laughs> I laugh, but that's not funny. Uh, they each face four counts of quote-unquote involuntary manslaughter. What, type, what kind of country are we living in? And pleaded not guilty. Yes, they apparently failed in raising their son. If it's both of their son, I, I assume. Uh, uh, but they're charging them. Prosecutors accuse the pair of giving their son unfettered access to a, the gun that he's accused of using in the shooting. That left four dead and seven injured, according to CNN. Doesn't sound like a crime giving a 15-year-old unfettered access to a gun. The, the crime, if you will, is raising them poorly. They failed him in other ways. Ridiculous. But he was a mess. And uh, most people are crumbly in the brain. Yeah. 
So shameful. I want to talk about this attack on white countries like Denmark and uh, some other stuff happening here in America. I do want to cover the Bill O'Reilly and, and Donald Trump history tour. I'm jealous of you guys. Make sure you guys go if you have the ability. Um, BillOReilly.com. I went to one of Bill O'Reilly's things, com slash tour. He was, before he got fired from Fox News or whatever happened, resigned. Uh, he was going to go with that guy, Jesse, uh, whatever that guy's name is. He did Man on the Street for the Bill O'Reilly show, Jesse Waters. But I prefer Trump and O'Reilly. Two boomers. Uh, and I know that a lot of you are not fans of O'Reilly, or even of Trump. Psh, lame. But I understand the criticisms. So, December 18th, that's Saturday, 3 p.m., Toyota Center in Houston, Texas. And December 19th, Sunday, 3 p.m., American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. Uh, watch Church on your way there, or listen to Church with Jason Lee Peterson on your way there. I know that we usually end before 1 p.m., so... Uh, you'll probably be in line listening um, to church. Nice, huh? Live. Cool, huh? On your smartphones. Right on. And uh, you can listen through um, rdo.2 slash jesse. R-D-O, like radio kind of thing. Dot two, T-O, slash J-E-S-S-E. No I in Jesse, guys. No I in Jesse. And that's a way that you can listen to the radio show, to the Hake Report and to church with Jesse Lee Peterson while we are live, and then it replays Jesse's radio show when we're not live. Very cool uh, resource to listen to live audio feed or download the JLP Live app. Anyway, <laughs> that's my commercial for them. But I, wanna, I will cover some of the stuff that's going on. But let me first get to a call here. Wow! Merle in Michigan wants to talk about the Michigan... Shooter, the Ethan Crumbly boy. How are you doing, Merle? Good. How are you, Hank? Fine. Yeah. Uh, well, so so the, uh, the the kid, the white kid from Michigan, who did the horrible thing. Yeah. You know, brought the gun to school, shot the shot the kid. It's horrible. It's yeah. Thing. Charged with terrorism, <laughs> even though it's like it's obvious he was just a mental case. I mean, he just you know, yep. depressed and you know crazy and uh probably uh you know maybe his parents are somewhat at fault but they charged his parents also with the crime yeah he was so, listening to his uh, thoughts then, his evil thoughts he said can't make the so thoughts let's compare, stop let's compare that to what happened in uh Waukesha. yeah so daryl brooks out of pure hatred and there's evidence of it uh for white people uh, in his social media Great post point, and a man. video that he made. Yep. Um, he ran over a bunch of white children and little old ladies in a parade. Yep. And he wasn't charged with terrorism. Wow. He was charged with six counts of there first... There is a such thing in this country as black privilege, and there's <laughs> absolutely zero white privilege. In fact, yeah. we're dealt with harshly. Yep. When the people who commit half the violent crimes, even though they're a small part of the population, are given uh, lots of passes. Right. Um, it's true, so, man. Okay, so so will this kid, this, what's his name, Quimbley, Quimbley, whatever his name is, the Crumbly. kid in Michigan. Yep. Uh, so will that set a precedent that all these black kids who get a gun and, and commit crimes, now their parents are going to be charged? Or will they be given the black privilege pass? Man, you bring up a, a great point. You know, I've, because it's not reported in CNN, I've almost forgotten about Waukesha. And I yeah, haven't really yeah. seen a lot about it, although it's a great resource. In uh, TKR official. Well, there were no riots. You know, <laughs> tum- the white people tum- weren't rioting tum- over it like they did, like the other people did for George Floyd. True. And- also, their sympathizers, who a lot of them were white, were doing the riots, too. Yep. Yeah. Or so-called um, white. Yeah. Yeah. So-called white is a good, uh, it's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, a lot of the people who victimized, well, two out of three were, were not actually white, but some people would call them that. 
you know, the people who victimized Kyle. Kyle Rittenhouse, yeah, his attackers. To defend himself. Yeah, his attackers. Right. Those who victimized him and forced him to defend himself. Yep. So, yeah, there's actually two points there, the uh, the Waukesha, and there's the third one that you brought up. Yeah, kind of quiet in the media, aren't we, about Waukesha? Yeah. Well, since you're an alternate media person, maybe you should keep it going and do your part, you know? I agree, man. I appreciate the reminder. Yeah. yeah. It's and good. you're doing a good job. I appreciate okay. it, Merle. It's good to hear from you. Merry Christmas good to you. Good to talk to you. God bless you and the staff. Thank you, man. You as well. Take care. Bye. Bye. Mm-hmm. So, uh, just briefly, on his point, Merle from Michigan, here's a headline from uh, Dana Kennedy over at New York Post, which is a mixed bag of an outlet. Here's a headline from December 13th. Not fitting their narrative. Waukesha, that's Wisconsin, feels abandoned after the tragic parade attack. Christmas parade. For her whole life, this is, I'll just read a couple of paragraphs for you guys. 67-year-old Sharon Millard was so shy, she used to ask her identical twin sister to go on dates for in her place in high school. <laughs> what a mess. Uh, ever since November 21st, when Daryl Brooks, that's the, uh, I should call him blah, 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 uh, Black Lives Matter terrorist, Allegedly plowed into dozens of people at the Waukesha Christmas Parade, killing six people, including an eight-year-old boy, and injuring up to 60 others, and he was zigz- he was swerving in order to get more people. Not like the Charlottesville guy, James Fields, who is much more innocent, I think, than Daryl Brooks, and I think that my thinking is fair on that. Millard has felt compelled to speak about the atrocity she witnessed. Of the people killed was Millard's fellow dancing granny, 79-year-old Virginia Ginny Sorensen, tossed up in the air like a rag doll by Brooks's SUV, say police. Uh, no one ever saw him coming, Millard told the Post. He was going so fast, all I knew is I saw Jimmy fl- Ginny, as in uh, Virginia, fly up in the air and land in front of me. Wow. And I don't want to read the rest, but it was... Uh, It's rough, but she describes what she saw from her friend, her friend's body. So evil. Brooks is a violent 39-year-old career criminal registered sex offender, and which, you know, everybody's a sex offender nowadays. (laughs) An amateur rapper from North Milwaukee with a rap sheet going back to 1999, when he was, what, 17 or something? Allegedly punched the mother of his child in the face early last month. Understandable. <laughs> playing. Totally playing, guys. I take it back. Uh, but we don't know what's going on with, between him and the, the mother. Uh, allegedly drove over her, leaving tire marks on her leg. So pff, he, was going, he was out of control. Despite the severity of that crime, he was released five days before the Waukesha rampage on a cash bail of just $1,000. And is he concerned about his own evil within? No. He's concerned about Kyle, Jack Bauer, John Wick, John Wayne Rittenhouse getting off, rightly so. Remember that? So evil, the uh, mainstream media is, and the blacks who jump to conclusions about the whites assume that they are guilty. He can be a quiet dude, Brooks's Milwaukee neighbor, Willie Bates, told the, the New York Post, but he can also be a bad dude. (laughs) <laughs> I chuckle because I'm remembering of uh, Corn Pop was a bad dude. That's Joe Biden's friend from uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Another rough place, right? Brooks bounced among his mother's house in a rough area in Milwaukee's north side and those of various girlfriends 20 miles away in Waukesha, one of them. Staying with his mother, he frequent his mom... He frequented neighborhood hangouts and a chicken place, fish place, (laughs) liquor store, rundown big man's place bar. And uh, he had, what what a mess, what a mess, just an evil mess. So when we start back knowing, back knocking white people, TF, as in the blank out, I don't want to hear it. That's, I don't want to hear it. That's black for, oh, it's clever. Entertaining. I don't want to hear it. 
The old white people too. Knock them TF out, period. He wrote under his Facebook rap name, Math Boy Fly. 39-year-old male. Along with a middle finger emoji. Full of hatred. And you know what? The people are like, oh, black people hating white people. Let's feel sorry for them. Oh, so sad. That's the liberals that I, and I personally know these people. They lash out in hatred and anger and evil and vitriol, totally baseless, crying racism against this and that. Give me a break. Anyway, thank you for the reminder. The great Merle from Michigan. I'm going to get to Denmark and more Biden and Bill O'Reilly and mess. And, of course, your calls. Some of you guys on hold. I will get to you. But first, guys, let me share a nice, I think, I, I honestly really love this song. This guy is a liberal, meaning woman at heart, woman, evil type but this is Sufjan Stevens' Hark! Songs for Christmas. And I got this before the 2006 release. Come thou fount of every blessing. It's a hymn. I hope you enjoy it. I know I do. And I will be right back for the rest of our two. Hang tight, guys. <laughs> This is pretty. 
Pretty Hague, nice song. Thank you, A.D. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate you bearing with me through that. I didn't see too many complaints. Let me read through a few of these. By the way, Lord A.O. says Daryl, referring to the Waukesha Christmas attacker, white people attacker. Daryl is straight up racist. Waukesha, a hate crime, says Janelle Swenson. Yeah. Uh, Sufjan Stevens, or Sufjan Stevens is how I used to pronounce it in my mind, because I didn't know how to pronounce it, is a beta... In fact, that is true. Haruspicus. Haruspicus. Hake hey, music made me want to boohoo some days, says Ebre. Liberal or not, at least he sings about Jesus. Much better than the boo boo something else crap these days, says Dusque De. Sorry, kids and parents. I had to repeat it, but it was, it is in fact accurate. Family 53511 says Deliver- Deliverance. Classic Christmas movie. Was, did this guy's music appear in Deliverance or something like that? That movie? Stephen Will, thank you for the, uh, the tip. Uh, why does it hurt my ears? Asks Lin Yen Chin. Yeah, long walk, short pier. Music says Shabbat, Shabbo. Hakes Banjo Christmas. Anyway. This is indeed not morally straight, says Smoke. Well, he says a different word. Hey, are you sure this isn't white supremacist Christian music? Pretty sure it's not white supremacist Christian music. (laughs) It is other type of, uh, it's wolf in sheep's clothing Christmas music. But it's a nice song, great song. Anyway, guys, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Based America first with the super chat here. I see why am I. That's short, that's a short for in case you missed it, missed it. It is not news companies like Media Sonar, Palantir, Predpol, Geofedia, and Voyager compile social media guilt by association profiles for government to police pre-crimes. However, Voyager now claims it can also access Telegram encrypted information. Voyager. It is not news that companies like Media Sonar, P- Palantir, Predpol, and Geofedia and Voyager compile social media guilt by association profiles. That means if you like Nick J. Fuentes and you follow him, you're going to be banned on Twitter, which I heard happened to a bunch of people. Um, or you will be contacted by the, questioned by the FBI, who should be questioned uh, themselves, honestly. Yeah. But anyway, guilt by association, that's what he was referring to. Profiles for government to police pre-crimes. And then go in and try to bait you into, hey, let's do an insurrection (laughs) or something dumb. Let's go, let's go uh, kidnap the female governor of of, uh, Michigan. (laughs) I'm referring to a Fed scam. However, Voyager now claims they can also access Telegram encrypted information. So if you go to Telegram... Don't be spreading mess. Don't get into private chat spreading mess. Contain yourself. Control the tongue and the fingers that type the thoughts. Because thoughts are evil. Don't type out evil thoughts. Nice. And uh, others have warned you about this. Which, I don't know if you guys are offenders, but... But people are ridiculous and type stupid stuff. 
and some people type stupid stuff well totally well meaning and uh, they get censored and they then they take it a little bit personally don't take it personally I understand the feeling but don't take it personally uh, but thank you for the heads up based America first appreciate the super chat and the information so if you go on t.me slash the Hague report or t.me slash uh, JLP talk, which is Jesse Lee Peterson's or t.me slash TKR official, which is an excellent resource as well as t.me slash real Vincent James. Uh, be wise in your conduct, right? Very nice. Very good. Voyager is one of the culprits that cooperate with the government on things like that. All these people think that crypto is safe from the government are mistaken. Numerous cases where criminals have been arrested cracked the encryption on crypto accounts. Wow. Uh, Asmodor says, Come thou fount of every blessing is a, is a hymn, not Christmas music. It's beautiful when you hear it sung in church. And lots of good singers have done nice versions of it. I don't know if you would include this one. <laughs> uh, this guy's soft voice. Keep the banjo, lose the singer, says taking care of business. It is terrible. <laughs> I was not in sixth grade when that song came out, man. I saw it in like 2004 or something, <laughs> or five. Uh, and I was, that means I was out of college already. Anyway, thank you guys for bearing with me through that. I got to get to some calls now. Joe in Phoenix, Arizona. How are you doing, Joe? Good morning, James. Good morning. Okay. Hope Mother you're well. Call. I'm doing well, thank you. Hope you're well, too. Yeah, thank you. I am. A lot to correct there. Okay. So the, the parents that were charged for their, their son's violence in school was not charged because they were white. They were charged because they ignored their warnings of their child's violent behavior and threats. And they bought him a gun a few days before the shooting. Purportedly. That's, that's the were, allegation. Um, that's why, why they, were, they, they were charged with involuntary manslaughter, not because they were white. Now that Daryl now uh, Brooks, now I didn't character. say that they were charged because they're white. Well, he was claiming that there's black privilege and no white privilege there. Well, interestingly, he's not talking so much about the parents. I mean, the parents a little bit. It's kind of funny because everything that you just mentioned is not a crime. Mm -hmm. Is not oh, a crime. Yeah, it is, James. No, it's not it a, crime. a crime. It is a crime to to ignore. Terroristic and, and murder threats. That Terroristic. Is crime, yes, Terroristic. Yes. Where yes. is the terrorism? Where is the terrorism? He, terrorism. He, define terrorism for us. Terrorism. Domestic terrorism, James. The, the kid claimed on social media about killing mass amounts of people out of school. He claimed that on some social media. That was a terroristic threat. I don't know if that's a terroristic threat. And I don't know yeah, if he is. I don't know if he said that on social media, but a terroristic threat is blood is everywhere. I'm political an article about Hold on, well, hold right on, now, Jay. hold on. That's that's a mass murder. That's not a terrorist act. A terrorist James, act. We're talking terrorism about is defined as here. domestic terrorism included. Is defined as politically motivated violence. James, am I wrong? Am I wrong? You are wrong. Yes, you're wrong. Crimes have different definitions in different jurisdictions. Absolutely, you're wrong. Yeah. No, you're silly. You're going along with this thing it's that is... how the law works, Jay. No, 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 no. People yes, play around with the law. You well know this, Mr. Tr Mr. Trained Lawyer. <laughs> you well yeah. know that people play around, including progressive prosecutors. What type of term is that? Play around with the law. And they, they, to this day, there are trained lawyers calling the January 6th an insurrection. Insurrectionists. Which is totally yeah, fake. Line and you well know that, that, that jurisdictions is, have different elements of crime, James. That's just the fact. No now, other move, school shooting move, ever. Moving on. Ever. Hey, Joe. No other school mm -hmm. shooting ever has been charged as terrorism. Okay. And, and that is a fact. That, just the facts. Facts are stubborn that, things, that. Joe. <laughs> yes, they are. Oh, that's my sarcasm for you. Yeah. Satanic now. sarcasm. The, the Daryl Brooks, I mean, this guy's clearly a mentally deranged idiot, sexual predator. there. And he, Bra he talked about social me on social media about knocking TF out 
white people. TF is in and, the and F I'd word. And I'd be fine with charging him and for that, terrorist threats also, yeah. See? Absolutely, yeah. Then it is a double standard. But James, to, to talk about him as an example of, of you know, so-called black violence, I mean, the guy was clearly an unhinged, deranged lunatic. Yeah, brainwashed felt, into anti-white hatred. And a self-described stoner. I mean, the guy had so many problems. I know, I understand that. Had, had Same thing with Dylan with, Roof. With his with his blackness. Had Same thing with Dylan Roof, life. by the way. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. And he, he, Bad parents, and he too, drugs. And he, yes, and he too was brainwashed, yeah? Uh, yeah, of course. Okay. Anyone, who's, so agree, anyone who is angry, including yourself, is brainwashed. Oh, uh, James, I have no anger. I'm just telling you this to fact, buddy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, now, so, Merle, so your, whole, your objective self admits that mm-hmm. there is... Apparently, a double standard. How so? Because one is no. charged with terrorism, where it has never been terrorism, and one is not charged with terrorism, where it's a clear case of terrorism. And different jurisdictions take different approaches to try to deter these crimes going forward. Okay, commie. That's what's going on. All right, communist. You know, see, so you resort you to, to name calling when you don't have to. No, no, you are a communist. Intelligent to, to, to. No, you no, are no, a I'm communist really because you don't like, you don't like a clarity. That owns multiple businesses, huh? Yes, sure. commie capitalist. Sense. Commie capitalist, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> I'm making up words now. No, it's, it's no, it, capitalists are communists. A whole bunch of capitalists those are, are communists. Those are two diametrically opposed. No, they're not. Uh, not true. Yes, they are, no, yeah. capitalism is a stepping stone to communism. Look it up. Uh, Look up wrong. the dialectic, Mr. Educated. <laughs> Is it called the dialectic? Yeah. It's a stepping stone to cap to uh, communism. No, it is not. Yes, you're, it is. You're wrong, sir. No, I'm not no, wrong. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna agree on that. Look it up. Look now, it up. The, the 1350 nonsense from Merle. It's 1.05 percent Merle of black people committing violent crimes. That's it. 1.05 percent. Not true. So it's no, percent true. it's not true. Mm-mm. No, you want, you want me to tell FBI you why knows, it's not true? The FBI knows better than, than you. Sure, go ahead and tell me. Yeah, uh, all people, the FBI does not know better. The, all people <laughs> who commit, hold on, all people who are, commit crimes are not caught. And the, the people who get away okay. the most with crimes are in black places like Chicago and elsewhere where That's the murder... Speculation. Hold on. The, wait, hold on. No, it's not speculation. It's a fact. The murder it's clearance it's, rates are, are abysmal. Murder clearance rates. Do you know what murder clearance rate is? Of course I do. Define it for the people. Murder cases that go unsolved that don't get end up in an arrest. Yep. No arrest. Uh, the suspect was not killed that they know of. They don't know. Those are, it's like 25 or 20 or 18%. It many many years, year after year, in places like Chicago and elsewhere. Nationwide, sure, the murder clearance rate... Know, hold on, hold on. As far as you know, it could have been anybody. Then. Hold on. That's being silly. You're being obtuse and muddying the waters. This is why I call you a communist. Because communists <laughs> yeah, okay. like to deceive with facts. One right? point zero five percent Merle. You're repeating that's something that's not true. I just debunked it. That's one hundred percent true. It's not debunked at all. I debunked it. Because you don't I debunked have it. Any, nationwide any facts, James. nationwide this are facts. Any facts on that. I'm gonna put you on hold if you don't be quiet. Nationwide the murder clearance rate is sixty percent. At least according back in twenty eighteen or whenever we interviewed uh, the great Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark, former sheriff David Clark had the murder clearance rates at 80%. Arrest, you know, they would arrest or admit or somewhat solve the case, at least in terms of what the police job is. 80% means four out of five they would catch, they would, in their minds, catch the murderer. Three out of five nationwide. Two or one out of five in uh, the, the black areas. But you think those could be all whites. Yeah, right, Joe. Do You're you dreaming. That's it. I said, you just don't know, is all I said. I know, because you're a communist. You're playing on the, oh, you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. Silly. Have you noticed that you're I haven't silly. called you a name yet? That you, you, you can tell me to call me a name. You can't because be you are a communist. Saying. No, that's the You're only a total you're rhino. Rhinos are communists. Mind. Oh, my God. Just, you're really, you're really grasping at straws now. No, I'm not. Anyway. I'm not grasping at straws. 
co- let me define what a communist is. A liar, a deceiver, someone who is intellectual and deceives people with uh, cherry-picked facts that you always s- resort to so you when did. you don't want to look so at the reality did. of things. So you then? Nah, you! <laughs> no, Wait, see, you. now you're trying to call me a communist. That's, that's underhanded name-calling. Typical. <laughs> you you lie and stereotype about black people constantly. We're talking not about. true. I tell those, the truth always. Lies. What what name one lie? No, I'm not even going to get into that because we've talked too long. Exactly. Okay, yeah, name one lie. Now, no, no, no. You don't control list. me. You can't even name a lie. I have a whole list. You most, keep a list. Check yourself. Most black people people are not violent. Mm-mm. Most black people are not retarded. Most black people are not cursed. Those are all <laughs> evil, disgusting lies. You don't know what cursed is. You are cursed and you don't even know it. And you are yeah, an angry you person. Ha! <laughs> You're a joke, sometimes, James. <laughs> Thank you. Now, <laughs> the, the last thing here. Um, okay. Oh, uh, what was it? You got it now. I got it. Um, oh, yeah. The reason why I call in with good black stories, not because I'm into my blackness, the way you enter your whiteness. Uh, uh, um, you don't know me. Go ahead. You know me, yeah, okay. <laughs> because to provide a little bit of balance, I was actually surprised to see you play, you know, the violent black idiot ghetto N word video and then play one of of, of the cameras. So that was surprising. <laughs> so. Don't call don't use that word. If you have to you say K word for, for white lady. <laughs> see, I, I think anyone could be a Karen. It's not Don't color, say it. Oh, no, I'm playing. K-word. Anyone can, 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 can <laughs> Don't say K-word, K-word though, yeah, because that makes me think that you're using like anti-Jewish slurs or something like that. Right. Anyone can can be an idiot. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm playing. I don't, I don't want to police your language. No, it's fine. I have no problem with that. Anyone can be an idiot in public. It's right. Not skin color specific. But so frequently, we all know that it is Democrats. Um, and that's why, okay, the Democrats, I'll go along with that. But again, <laughs> that's why I say that nobody, like Chris Rock says, nobody, and it's a joke, so I'll use the word hate. Nobody hates ghetto in words more than good, decent, hardworking black dogs. Who are and that's the problem, because them. you shouldn't hate them. You should love them. Again, it's a joke, James. You should love, you should, but, should you not love everyone as a Christian? Sure. We yeah. are called as Christians to love everyone. Including the, the, the ghetto N word blacks. But the point, the, the point he's making there, James, is that those ghetto N-words <laughs> give good black people a terrible, terrible name because their behavior, and so I keep trying to encourage you to listen to real commentators like, like Glenn Lowry, who take those type of behaviors to task and, and really, really dive into them and say, hey, and hold them to, to account. This behavior is not okay. It needs to change now. And that's what Cosby was doing, and that's why they didn't put Cosby in jail. Cosby's innocent. Anyway, say again? I say Cosby's innocent. 100% he's innocent, yes. Yeah. 110% innocent, and I'm so glad he's out, although I can't believe they're taking him back to court again. That really, really makes me angry. Do you see that as an attack on men? Oh, 100%, of course, yeah. Yeah. Well, all right, Joe. Nice talking with well, you. I'm, Merry I'm Christmas. Glad we, we, we could end on an agreement. Merry Christmas to you, James, and have a good day. All right. And Merle, try to learn something and stop repeating the negative anti-black nonsense. <laughs> We're talking about N-words, not good black people. Whatever, Joe. Don't get under Merle's skin. All right, Joe. Take I'm care. Just, take care. Bye-bye. All right. Um, before I get back to calls, guys, a uh, couple of super chats here. Uh, Asmador gave a super chat referring to the Michigan school shooter guy, Ethan Crumbly. The school who warned them, the teacher I think, who warned them about his behavior, or the school who warned them, the parents or something like that, the school did not search his backpack either. The school is just as responsible if the parents are responsible. It was the school who alerted the parents and had the kid in the office. They didn't search his backpack, but he had, purportedly, he had the gun. In his backpack, and they did not search it. Uh, the, the, um, there's these rules against, politically correct rules against the, about the rights of the, of the minors, right? 
uh, Asmodor states when it with another super chat on Odyssey, O D Y S E E dot com slash at the Hague Report slash live. When a deranged white does a violent act, blacks are always like, oh, they be trying to wash it away saying he crazy. And here's Joe doing the same way in the opposite direction for the black who uh, caused, who committed the crazy crime against whites. Oh, he's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, good point, Asmodor. Yeah, true. They do that. Um, let me quickly get to... Skip in Augusta, Georgia. How you doing, Skip? Thanks, man, for calling. Hey, James. How, how you getting along? Fine, sir. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Look at here. Joe King and kills me with his statistics and his numbers. <laughs> now, he's saying there's only 1%. That's 1% that were caught. Right. When they use these statistics, these are crimes that have been solved. Right. So they know who committed these crimes. Look how many, none of these crimes... Or being just about none of them are being solved in Chicago, Baltimore, and these cities with these drive-by shootings, yep. with these snatch and grabs. Yeah, and we can all clearly see they're black, but yep. they're not being caught, so they can't be added to the statistics. Right. So what he what he he's giving us bull crap. Yeah. His, his, his <laughs> statistics are, are bull crap because you cannot add a statistic, you cannot add unsolved crimes to that, and we can see. Clearly, by looking at the news, that there are black crimes, the black criminals that are doing it. Right. Well, that's clarity, Ray Skip. Steve, Ray, Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder can see that. Yep. And those guys are blind physically. <laughs> well, Stevie Wonder ain't blind. <laughs> <laughs> True. And Ray Charles He's is not. not blind. He's dead. Isn't he dead now? Hey, rest in peace, you know Ray Charles. Steve, did you, did you, did you know that Stevie Wonder is not blind up for real? I've heard the claim, I think. Yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of videos on them. <laughs> but anyhow, that just that just kills me about Joe King and yeah. wants to bring up all he's so statistical. He's got the numbers. Right. Oh, I've got He well, only has a favorite so, uh number. Less than two percent. And now he's been he, saying one point zero six percent or something. <laughs> he says he says, James, the numbers don't lie. <laughs> James, the numbers don't lie. <laughs> That's funny, man. He's so smart. I've got a ninth grade education, and I know that these crimes have to be solved before you can add them to a statistic. Yeah. say, well, this, this number of blacks did it, and this number of whites did it. He, and, and, and he's a so-called lawyer. Uh, maybe he got his law degree at Walmart. I don't know. But, well, uh, I'll tell you what. Have, there's a lot of lawyers— who uh, are liars, and they know how to deceive you, with uh, facts. You reckon? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. need to, like, deport right. these people. Thank you, Skip. Appreciate yeah. you. All right. You too, James. Take care now. All right. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank you. Same to you. Cool. Um, briefly, before I get to Jeremiah from Louisiana, it's coming up next. Shocking Danish immigration hardliner jailed. Don't jail the illegals. Don't jail the immigrants. I mean, if they're legal, I mean, I guess you can't jail them unless they're criminals. But uh, don't jail the illegals. This is from the far left Enemies of America publisher. <laughs> Big Bump says, Stevie Wonder literally said he can see racism in America. <laughs> so he's, that is blind because he's, you can't see, ra liar, he's a liar and he's blind. Anyway, uh, that's funny. Denmark's former immigration minister sentenced to jail over separation of underaged asylum seekers. So they are illegals. Asylum seekers are the people who want to pretend like they're refugees. Oh. <laughs> A Danish court of impeachment has issued a 60-day, 6-0, two-month, practically, prison sentence for former immigration minister and this beautiful woman, Inger Stolzberg. 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 <laughs> Help me out. Uh, would Samuel the Swede know how to pronounce Danish? Did you know that I'm part Danish? I'm like a quarter Danish, I think. I could be wrong, but I think I'm Scottish, Danish, 
Not too much Irish people. Um, not too much Irish. I think the red hair is maybe Scottish or English. A little bit of English, some American. Nice. Atlantean. <laughs> uh, Minister Inger, Inger Stolzberg, the, the O with the thing crossed out. <laughs> After finding her guilty of neglecting ministerial duties and ordering the separation of underage, meaning minors, asylum-seeking couples, Al Arabia reports, Stolzberg, Stolzberg, I don't know how to pronounce it, who held her position from 2015 to 2019, has been known for multiple controversial comments and her hard stances on immigration which included anti-immigration advertisements in Lebanese media, nice, based, and welfare cuts, according to the New York, the failing New York slimes. What a mess. So evil. So backwards. These people are invading Denmark. They have no right to be there. And she, like, separated underage asylum-seeking couples. Are they even married? They shouldn't be together, right? Yes, separate them. Hake wishes he was Irish. <laughs> I know, that's why I talk so much mess about the Irish and the Italians, because of jealousy. <laughs> anyway. What a shame, huh? What a shame. Did you show the picture of her? Uh, what a beautiful woman. Thrown in jail. Thrown in jail. For standing up for her country. She was in... She was... In her position concurrent with the end of the Obama administration and the early, be- early Trump administration, first term. Or at least the first few years, two, three years. What a mess, huh? And they're doing that in America, too. It's ridiculous. Remember when, I mean, there's people in jail right now for nothing, for loving their country. Shameful. Let me get to Jeremiah in uh, Louisiana. Jeremiah, thank you for holding, man. How are you? Oh. Hey. What's happening? Just hanging out. Chilling. Yeah, how you doing? Fine, man. How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Cool. Uh, so I wanted to kind of expound on this uh, subject that we kind of got into yesterday. I didn't want to get into it, really, but you took it there. So you said something about you clarified that... Uh, that statement you made about 14-year-old girls, I must have missed it. Can you clarify it for me? What What did you want me to clarify? I don't remember. Well, from to my knowledge, from what I remember, you and John, my brother, <laughs> got into it about uh, Epstein and Trump, right? No, and you said that's not true. About, well, that was the initial. That's no, it was mean. not. That's the initial. Uh-uh, it was R. Kelly. You interrupted me. Can I, can I, I am can interrupting I you because I, you're, tell, you're saying something that's can not true. Can I explain true. what I heard? You did not hear yeah, you that. Let me explain what I you heard. did not hear that. You said something about 14 year, olds, 14 year olds are not little girls. You kept repeating it. 14 right. year olds are not little girls. Yeah, and that was regard to R. Kelly. Okay, it was like, okay, R. Kelly. Yeah. Y'all Thank were talking you. about R. Kelly. Get it right. Y'all started talking about Epstein and Trump. You did. You not talking about not in that instance. Not in that instance. Okay, Hank. Yeah. So can you clarify what you said about that? About 14 year olds are not little girls? Okay, yeah, I did that, it yesterday and, too. And you saying that it's. it's it, it's better to have a, a kid by a, a younger uh, girl instead of an older woman. That's a and that's that that's in reference that to health. That's in reference to health of uh, women who get abortions because there's a, a breast cancer link with women who get abortions, purportedly, according to some experts. Okay. So Abortion said, and breast you, cancer. It's healthier for the if, if a 13 year old girl were to get pregnant. She should have that baby Five rather than get an abortion. Man. And and women who get an abortion or or and actually it's it's worse for women to um I think to not have kids as well as to have kids later and later in life because it's not as good for them. They're they're more likely to develop breast cancer. So uh-huh. start your kids or er, start having kids as a young woman. Not as an as old young, as woman. As young as what would you say? I don't know. I don't know. You You're don't the Israelite. Know. What is what is the you, Israelite you law? Know. What's the Old Testament say? How you old? Do, you do not what does the Old Testament 14 year old, say? Fourteen-year-old is a young woman. That's not a woman. 
a young woman. She she's still not a woman. She has a, she has a lot to learn. All right, all right, yeah, you know, you know, I agree with but, that. But, but I but, agree with but, that. But, but hold on, you said something about the ones that don't have fathers in their home. Yeah, those are the ones that look like uh, whatever. I guess. Yeah, did you they, not know that? that look, Had you never heard that? It's a scientific I, I, fact. I have, no, I haven't heard that. Yeah, it's a scientific fact. Uh, fathers are very important because they preserve the I'm innocence. They preserve the innocence of the children. When the father is not around, I don't know if it's something in the body that instinctively it, it just starts to develop be, in order to attract a man or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but uh, the, the women, young girls, women... So what do you think about Miley Cyrus? Develop. And her, her Miley Cyrus around? still looks like a little girl, <laughs> except was she's was perverted. Around, she looks like a little it's, boy, it's a honestly. Lot, it's a lot of these girls that went to Epstein Island or Hollywood. They did? Parents, Miley Cyrus went to Epstein around. Island? <laughs> I had not heard that. Uh, I believe so. I believe she did. It's a lot of those you know uh, what? Disney, those Disney uh, kids that went to Epstein Island or Hollywood and got turned out. All yes. Disney, all That's Disney people, almost all, are perverted. You know, they uh, we've fallen uh, a Mickey long Mouse ways Club. from the great Walt Disney. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, all that the Mickey Mouse Club, right, right, exactly. Because Walt so Disney was not went, like and, that. I don't and, believe. I'm sorry. What'd you say? I said Walt Disney was not like that, I don't believe. But. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, Hollywood is ran by a lot of uh, weirdos. That's why I call True. it Hollywood. True, but, you know. but I, way back when, I don't know if I believe. You know, it's, it's not good to get into speculation about people. You're, mm. you're a man. You wouldn't want people to speculate about you. Right, right. That's why I made that point with Tony, and maybe it was ill-advised. I joked with Tony, oh, Tony, I saw you with a young person, too. But, because people, people do that. People just make up stuff and now, lie. Listen, that, was, that was just a lie. No, that was just a blatant lie. Yeah, I was, I, and this, I was, I, I wasn't making, I wasn't making any bones about it. But you don't want to speculate about people, because you don't know. But this stuff about, well, wasn't Trump about to come out and try to uh, figure out this sex trafficking thing? And that's, he got blackballed He did, a, he pursued a lot of that stuff. Right. So yeah, he exposed. He there were a lot of arrests with regard to the sex trafficking stuff uh, under okay. Trump. I heard. Okay. Okay. Did you not know okay. that? I didn't know that. No. You need well, to get in touch with your brother Art. Art in have Ohio. They, they not released that. Art in Ohio. Maybe Tribe of Judah. Too. Yeah. Art. Art. Shout out. Uh, yeah. He ahead. he knows about that stuff. Well, that's good. You yeah. Know? That's good. That, it's, it's, we need. And he's still in, and he's still rolling with Trump. Twenty twenty. Okay, but then you said something about the uh, the Catch Me Outside girl, right? Yeah. You said something about her. And she her, was separated her from her father. Or so, but you said, I lied. I didn't lie. You were saying this stuff. So what did I lie about? You claim, are you the one who claimed that I was looking at 14-year-old girls? That I said right. that I was looking at 14-year-old girls? I never you, said you, that you, I was how, looking how, at 14-year-old girls. You, how would you know all of this if you weren't looking at them? But you claim that I said that I was looking at fourteen-year-old girls. I don't look well, at fourteen-year-old girls. What the heck? This, you, you did. You did. You, 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 did you, 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 you made claims. You're trying to. You're just trying to smear a white man I'm as a pedo. I'm not it's, it's, I'm not at all. Y'all all right. All right. You you're about, you're, you you're so innocent. This? You're so did innocent you and well-meaning and pure-hearted. I don't, I don't look at fourteen-year-old girls. <laughs> I don't believe in incest. Y'all do incest. There was a guy oh, in the no, that got you don't. Six, no, 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 six no. Six hundred counts of incest. Nuh-uh. Did you hear about that? Did you, Did you know? We, I'm not going to get into this dirt, it's a dirty topic, Jeremiah, but the blacks are every bit as guilty, if not more. About, I'll just say incest? that, and I'll just leave it alone. Yeah, with it's a, incest? Yeah, it's yeah, a fact. Okay, you just leave that alone, hey. Just leave it alone. You don't yeah, because it's a, it's a, honestly, it's a dirty topic. Why would you, why are you so interested in this stuff? <laughs> it ain't that, that's y'all. That's what y'all do. Okay, yeah, it's y'all. Donnie, Donnie, All right. Donnie said, Donnie said something All right, about. I gotta go, man. I'm hanging up on him. Um, appreciate the call, Jeremiah. You got filthy. Isn't that peace and quiet? So nice. <laughs> Speaking of this stuff, I got to get to Joe in Oregon. He has a question for me. Joe, thank you for calling and holding. What's up? Hey, hey, how you doing? Doing well, man. How are you? I'm good. Hey, Everybody um, calling themselves well, good, and I'm letting them all get away with it. What the heck? <laughs> well, I nice. can go into detail, but right I don't want to waste your viewers' time. Anyway, um, about Bill Cosby, you had you brought up Bill Cosby earlier. Uh, he said a lot of 
really great things to the black community regarding uh, acting in a more respectable, dignified manner and such. Honestly, it's and like I basic really common sense. I don't give him that much credit, but okay. Yeah, true. Yeah. But anyway, um, you also said that you thought he was innocent. And I just want to know why I'll you tell think you, that. I'll tell you what. Because, okay, go ahead. I, I don't mean he's innocent in, in that no man is innocent and this guy was not innocent like like a pure-hearted person and like lived a, a perfect life behind closed doors. I'm not saying that. I am saying that this Me Too attack on him is unfounded, these rape accusations. Uh-uh, I'm not buying that at all. That whatever he, whatever he did with, these, with those young ladies, or whatever ladies that they were, and I use the term loosely, was between him and them, and these are evil people. They're not innocent people. These people who are going after him are worse than him. That's my only point. Well, <clears throat> and this, I mean, and this, it. this going after him, they're going after him because what you just said, he went after, he went, he wanted a little bit of responsibility for the black community. Yeah. And, I, and I'll tell you, I'll prove it to you. I mean, if you accept this as proof, the thing that went, took this viral, there had been rumors about him for years, but it had been clamped down because he maintained a sense of respect for the American people. He hid his issues. He had the dignity to have uh, shame and cover up his wrongdoing. Do it in, keep it in the closet. If you got to do it, keep it in the closet, right? Um, yeah. What's that guy's name? This dumb comedian, evil person, young guy, Hannibal Burris, I want to say, is the one who sent this viral. It went viral on that radical homosexual outlet TMZ that's anti-white, anti-Christian. Uh-huh. Uh, you, you rate, pull up your pants, he mocked. He mocked Bill Cosby in a stand-up. Yeah, but you rape women, Bill Cosby. And so he's specifically bitter at Cosby for standing up for what's right when maybe behind closed doors he did illicit things, sex out of wedlock or something, or maybe cheated on his wife or something. That's, that's an evil person who's trying to shut up a yeah. man who's telling the truth because of something that has nothing to do with him. Uh, Hannibal Burris is a woman and an evil mm-hmm. woman at that, at heart. So that's yeah. my point. Okay. Well, I mean, I-, I totally get what you're saying, and I wouldn't doubt that liberals, uh, you know, were trying to shut up Bill Cosby because they didn't like what he was saying. But, <clears throat> and, you know, Bill Cosby could be innocent. However, there were about 50 women who made these accusations against him, and? and including things like drugging them. And? And then having... So, I'm not saying that... It's What's your point? What's your point about... How is I'm that, a, how is that a point? I'm how is that to, relevant? 50 women well, and let drugs. Let make my point. If you'd be quiet for a moment, I can make my point. Go ahead. So, I'm not saying that he definitely... No, 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 no. Explain guilty. the 50 women thing. Don't give me any, I'm not saying this or that. I'm trying to explain it. So I'm not saying that he's definitely guilty, but what I'm saying is, with that many accusations, most likely, I would say, he's guilty. Wow, shame on you, Joe. Why? You should be ashamed of yourself. Why? Tell me. One, accusations are not evidence. Two... I agree. Two, 50 accusations have no more weight than just one. And three, I, drugs I was the culture. They were doing quaaludes. They were doing black beauties and, and partying. It's specifically to have sex. But, suppo- but these women Ain't no have buts. said, and maybe they're lying. Maybe not they're maybe. Lying. Not maybe. But they're, but In, they're have you ever heard of innocent mean, unless proven guilty? Yes. Then why are you buying into this at all? Well, okay, you're forgetting the fact that I said... It's de- it's not. I'm not saying that he's definitely guilty. No, I'm just saying innocent that unless am, proven guilty. Don't I, buy any of it. You have zero. Has I, you have, would you want? Let's say 50 people came together and and.
let's say you were a rich, famous person and you slept yeah. around and 50 of them got the bright idea, women no, no less, and maybe radical homosexual males, uh, yeah. went after you. Would you want anybody to give any credence to them or rather, or rather presume you innocent bar, uh, without as long as there's no proof? I am presuming him. Innocent. No, you're not. What I'm you're saying, feeding. Yes, you're I feeding am. into the he could be guilty thing. And you're saying feeding into the fifty women thing and the drugs no, thing. There is you're, no. You're. Go ahead. You're reading into what I'm saying. No, you're the what one I'm saying, saying it. <laughs> what I'm saying is he could be innocent, but I am inclined no, to I, think that he's not because of there's so many accusations. That's that not. A, that's guilty. not a reason. I'm not saying he's guilty. I'm just saying, if someone held I didn't a gun say to my that you were head, saying that he's guilty. You should be presuming him. You're 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 presuming that he that there's that there's fire where there's smoke, but there's not always fire where there's smoke because a lot of people, uh, a lot of people falsely accuse, especially women, especially yeah, nowadays. I, I agree. I agree. You so then, why are you buying into this thing women. at all? I'm not. I think you're yeah, you are. You're buying into it. I'm you're saying. repeating the mainstream media saying fifty women. Hey, if someone held a gun to your head and said, okay, is Bill Cosby innocent or guilty? And if you give the wrong answer, we're going to shoot you. What would you say? There is no if. That's a, I would assume that he's innocent. Okay, fine. That's, that's your prerogative. That's, uh, that's just, fairness, Joe. What's happened to your sense of fairness? I, I have a sense of fairness. No, I'm not saying well, he's guilty. Okay. I'm Whatever. not saying he's guilty. But I'm yeah, the then why subject. are you feeding into the mainstream meat? Well, we're repeating. We're going in circles. You're feeding yeah, yeah, into yeah. the... You're pretending okay. that it makes any... That it makes it more valid just because they piled onto him. Give me a break. Have you seen the women that went after him? The main woman uh, who did it a was a lesbian. Uh-huh. Well, anyway, on a related subject... All right. Uh, for your black viewers, uh, I want to tell them... Please go into your black communities and and tell your fellow black citizens to this is this is very important. If you really want to bring up the black community, tell other black people to act in a dignified, civilized manner. Speak properly, act properly, dress properly, and that's what that's gonna really help the black community. Okay. Do you agree? Uh, honestly, I, uh, I was a little distracted. You said speak properly and stuff like that? Yeah, I, I think the black, what, the thing that the black community can do for um, other blacks is to encourage other blacks to act in a dignified, civilized manner, <laughs> which includes <laughs> so nice. Speaking properly, dressing properly, obeying the law, and just, you know, just be civilized. How about stop hating? And, huh? How about stop hating? And stop hating. Stop. No, it's not and right. stop hating. That's the main thing, man. That's what's causing them to be the way that they are. When, you, when you're hate, hate, when you're filled with hatred, you go crazy. And you can't yeah. control yourself. You can't. You can't. Uh, not resist arrest? What the heck? Yeah. No, I agree. I agree completely with you. Anyway, I mean, man. I think that, but the, that's related because that's what Bill Cosby used to do. He used to tell black people that they need to be, they need to act in a civilized, dignified manner. And I think more black people should do that. And that would really help the black community. In a no, big but way. that's fake because all these communists are acting in a communists, including blacks and others, are acting in a civilized, dignified, fake manner, and they're they're even worse than the the the, the thugs. They're worse than the ghetto blacks because the ghetto blacks have a little bit of simplicity in, to them, whereas these people are are um, deceivers, misleading each, misleading many. The, the blacks yeah, at the top, well, like Obama, like, uh, like all these people, the fast talking well, lawyer obviously. blacks, forget them. They are so evil and they're, they speak in a dignified, proper manner. They're snakes. Oh, I agree. I mean, they should also, of course, uh, 
course, it's uh, morals. Adopt conservative, common sense values. And I think and whites need to tell them yeah. get some morals too. Yeah, <laughs> but a lot of whites are don't have morals as well. The liberals, right? They don't have morals. And many of the conservatives. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate hearing from you. It's, I, I'm glad you called in because I I like to clarify that thing about Cosby every so often. Yeah. And so I appreciate well, the disagreement, Joe. It's good to hear from you. Sure. Merry Anytime. Christmas to you. Yes, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you, man. Call again. All right. All I right. will. Talk to you soon. All, All right. right. Bye. Uh, oh, no. I accidentally hung up on one of my calls. <laughs> I got all confused. Um, man. Uh, did I see a couple of super chats here? Let me just double check. Oh, here is a quick super chat for you guys. Uh, Asmodor over there on Odyssey, O-D-Y-S-E-E dot com slash at the Hague Report. The criminal justice system. Per Vox.com, far left enemies of America, Vox.com, in an article, has one in 13 blacks either in prison, on probation, or parole right now. That's nearly 8%. And it only counts people in trouble right now. One over 13 is, 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 uh, 7.69%. 7.692307 7.692307 uh, percent, nearly 8 percent, in trouble right now. Uh, not all of them are quote-unquote violent, but it gives you a more, uh, what would you say, what would you say? A little bit more balance to the view that only 1.07 percent of blacks commit violent crimes. That's a fact, FBI. Liberal. <laughs> Am I right? Okay. Um, man, before I get to calls, I gotta cover this. I gotta cover this. I've been wanting to cover it for a couple days. Bill O'Reilly and Donald J. Trump. Donald Trump and Bill O'Reilly's tour begins with empty seats in Florida, says a report. And I have some, some photos and tweets about this whole thing. That's a Newsweek article. Begins with empty seats in Florida per a report. But that's a lie. It, be, it didn't even begin. And they, when, with the photos that you see, and if you look at the photos, you'll see the overhead lights are on, the chairs on the stage that Trump and O'Reilly sit in, they're doing this history tour, right? Are empty, meaning the event has not started. The people are just filtering in. The line was out the door for like an hour, or even, uh, it was crazy. Um, I heard that they might have closed, closed or shut an upper section. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if you would want to be in an upper section anyway. But, uh, Bill O'Reilly, well, Daily Beast put it out, of course, Enemies of America. Yahoo and Huffington Compost, or Huffington Post. Donald Trump and Bill O'Reilly reportedly fizzle, event fizzles in Florida, even though they made like two million dollars. Uh, Trump and O'Reilly tour kicks off with many empty seats. Uh, massive crown crowd headed to Florida t- today. Trump O'Reilly history show starts soon. And a lot of people are not real fans of O'Reilly. I understand it. I, I like the guy. Um, appreciate him. And, uh, he was smeared. Uh, investigative reporter for the Sun Sentinel, Brittany Wallman of Twitter. Shared pictures. And she says that he doesn't, she doesn't have an estimate. But she shared pictures before the event started. Overhead lights are on, like I said. And they, the event hasn't started. She said each person paid $138 or more. Some people paid thousands for VIP ac- access. And she shares photos. Look at the, just look at the, all these different photos that uh, we're going to show. Look at this. And she's all, still plenty of empty seats still. But it hasn't even started yet. The chairs are empty. Ridiculous. Someone claimed that the top portion was uh, closed off, like I said. Bill O'Reilly tweeted, The first two Trump history shows went great. Ticket sales for all four shows, about four shows, wow. 30,000 30, with Houston and Dallas next weekend still selling. Gross receipts for the first show, $2 million. Newsweek and other far-left 
propaganda cesspools outright lying about the tour. Surprised? Not surprised. Uh, funny quote from Brittany Wallman. She tweeted out this uh, picture of this old lady. 95-year-old woman. <laughs> oh, sweet 95-year-old white woman. Kay Peters. She says of journalists, and apparently this Brittany Wallman woman, uh, told Kay Peters, 95-year-old year old lady, that she's a journalist. She's all, I'm very pleased to see you are human. <laughs> and you are at least open-minded enough to listen. I'm going to try to change my opinion and think that they're not all monsters referring to journalists. <laughs> and she's wearing a MAGA hat. Nice. I love old people. Uh, Brittany Wallman tweeted about a selfie of herself undercover, saying, Media were not allowed, said Trump, but they're here. Yeah, this, this woman snuck in. Um, Brett Trump, look at her, wearing a DuPont, like a NASCAR type, type hat. <laughs> and she's wearing her N95, that mask thing. Goofy. Goofy woman. Anyway. Trump advocated for tougher libel laws, particularly undoing the media's protection to cover public figures without being silenced by lawsuits. Or he said that's better than his solution, which is with a machine gun. Uh, Brittany Wallman said, uh, asked who is his favorite world leaders were. Trump said, the ones I did the best with were the tyrants. <laughs> for whatever reason, I got along great with them. Isn't that better than having a nuclear war? Indeed. Donald Trump. South Florida Station 850 WFTL tweeted, Bill O'Reilly and President Trump live at the F Florida Live Arena in Sunrise, Florida. O'Reilly asked him about January 6th. Trump responded with November 3rd was the insurrection. January 6th was a protest. Nice. Thank you, President Trump. Right on. That's according to some reporter guy. And he said he, he liked Obama during the Florida event with Bill O'Reilly. He said, I liked him, calling him smart and sharp. <laughs> but he also said that Obama's methods caused tremendous, tremendous division and hatred in the country, which everybody knows. So anyway, what a mess. He teased a 2024 run. He said, well, I don't want to repeat that because I'm going to have to disavow the statement, but he... He didn't say what the mainstream narrative is about the uh, election, I'll tell you that much. And he also said that um, he praised himself on the mandates, but he said no mandates or whatever. So, see, he's kind of on our side. Vote for Trump in 2024 if he runs, I say. So, anyway. Um, oh, let me quickly get to... Dr. ADD out of Stockton, California in the last minute here. Dr. ADD, you got 30 seconds, man. Go. All right, man. I'll go straight to it. In the Hebrew Bible, it says uh, daughters are depicted as sexually available to fathers. The Stibert 2016 it literally says in their Hebrew Bible. If they're what's gonna what's the Hebrew the Bible? Black Hebrew I thought Israelite he, stuff. That's the Hebrew Israelite stuff. Yeah, if they're gonna preach that, it literally says. Uh, don't tell uh, me this uh, stuff. Uh, I don't want to get into that mess. It's it's in their Bible. It says that marriage <laughs> uh, sex should only be between marriageable people, and in the Hebrew Bible, marriageable people are. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm going. I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume <laughs> that. That that's a reference to the fathers giving away their daughters to a husband. Man. I mean Don't even don't do that mess. I I'm not into that. Hey, I'm not I'm not preaching it. I'm just <laughs> saying right. if they're gonna say, no, Oh no, no, hey, no, why I, you I got you. all these kids? You made your the point. Doing it themselves. All right. <laughs> well thank you, Dr. A D D. It's good to hear from you, man. Yeah, man. Merry you Christmas. Good, all right. Thanks, man. Merry Christmas. You too. All right. Take care. All right, guys, John in Kentucky wanted to ask me if uh, OJ was guilty. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, this has been a fun, maybe, Hague Report. It is 11, so over here in, in L.A. So uh, catch you tomorrow, hopefully.
And again, hopefully tomorrow we have scheduled a Bond Archive Sunday service throwback. Thank you, guys, and take care.